Hello fellow plot questers, today we've got Mino, which is a short dialogue by Plato, which is a dialogue about Socrates talking to this guy named Mino. It is very very short and a very very quick read, and today we'll be discussing what happens within, within the book, and the kind of discussions within it, the doubts that I have about it, and it's just, in general, just gonna be a quick little discussion of ours. Alright, let's get right into it. So, basically the context of Mino is this, is virtue slash excellence, depending on what translation you've read, is is that thing that that thing of virtue or excellence is that is that teachable is is it possible to teach that and if so can you please teach me that is essentially what mino's entire thing is. is is there something to so essentially socrates goes okay in the normal socrates manner he starts asking questions like okay can we define virtue or excellence then and mino starts describing different types of excellence by which socrates says okay, you're describing, you're trying to define excellence, but you're kind of only stating one aspect of excellence. Like, for example, let's take this example to shapes. If we think about a shape, you can say a circle is a shape, but shape is not circle, right? So you can't just say, oh, excellence is virtue. Or I mean, excellence slash virtue is just being courageous or being modest, for example, because that's only one aspect of being an excellent slash virtuous person. So, so Soc and, and then Socrates essentially goes, okay, I'll give an example using shape of how we can get a blanket definition for excellence. And he goes, okay, so shape is something that we can see with our eyes that works in correlation with color. That's, he, that's his definition of shape. Meanwhile, our, our dear friend Mino, who is kind of dumb, I think, goes, yeah, yeah, okay, and he tries to define it again, except he does the same thing, to the point where Socrates kind of gets frustrated, I think, and and asks him, like, and starts to, like, give him even more of a hard time, to which Mino kind of goes, like, oh, um, you know, like, why why are we looking for knowledge when when we don't know about it? And Socrates basically just says, blasphemy, because, you know, um, according to Socrates and according to Greek mythology, once we die, we reincarnate to become a different person. And therefore, every time, every new soul, every person in the world would have had this, would have gone through and learned everything already by this point. And therefore, they're simply recollecting what they have learned, which is a very, very popular and one of the most famous Socrates, one of the most famous things that Socrates has ever said about the soul. The soul is immortal. Um... And essentially, he says, knowledge, right, comes from recollection. But virtue, we can't recollect virtue, right? Because let's take, for example, he takes examples of some great, great people and virtuous people, people that are supposed to be con considered virtuous within, within the, at that time period. And he goes, okay, this guy and this guy and this guy. They have sons and they have daughters, right? They have children. Did those children become excellent and become virtuous as well? I mean, they, they've gotten good at chariotting, they've gotten become good at horse riding, and they've gotten the best education they could possibly get from their excellent, virtuous, noble fathers, except they, they couldn't be taught how to be virtuous. Wouldn't these fathers taught their own way of virtue if they could? And basically, starting from that argument, Socrates goes, so essentially, virtue isn't teachable. And that, that's the entire dialogue, and it's pretty simple. And honestly speaking, I'm going to question a couple things, and then we're going to go into the weird parts of his style, okay? First off, um, he says uh, about, the, about the recollection theory of the soul is immortal. Like, I don't 100% agree with that, but yet I don't 100% disagree. Because it's, it's, a, it's an explanation, but there's also an argument that could be made about how humans are born, is born with an instinct to see what is right and what, what is logical and what makes sense like for example think about a poem right some things that you that you read just feels wrong while other things feel right and people are born with um this this innate desire to see something beautiful to see something perfect that's why we're we're attracted to attractiveness and and i think that there's a base instinct there and socrates admits that there are some god-given gifts because he says virtue is a god-given gift Therefore, wouldn't wouldn't it kind of make sense if if we said, um, it is it's just a natural born talent of all humans to be able to learn, but also also the fact it can he can kind of turn that around on us and say, recollection is the 
kind of explanation for why we have such an instinct because we already experienced it in a previous life and our subconscious mind is aware of it. But it's an endless argument and I think it's a pretty interesting one. So I just kind of stated the basics on both sides. Now, on, on the actual dialogue itself, first off, Socrates is so out of character in this entire dialogue, right? He's acting super almost flirtatious with Mino. It feels like he's like really just like messing with him. Because at first he kind of does feel genuine. Like it does feel like an average Socrates Plato type dialogue where Socrates is asking questions like, okay, this one fact, this must be true, yes? You agree, right? Because you can't disagree. All right, if this is true, this is true. You agree with this too, right? And then he goes on and on saying fact after fact after fact, linking them with each other logically to try to prove a point of it. That's how Socrates works. And that's how a lot of the other dialogues went. And it, it, it has the same thing. It starts the same, except I feel like Mino isn't following along with Socrates and just gives up in the middle of it, at, at which he calls Socrates a torpedo, question mark. Which means, you know, Socrates numbs him, which again is questionable. And essentially, the, the entire dialogue is, is Mino being confused and Socrates kind of almost making fun of him. Because, like I said, Socrates justifies his logic through fact after fact after fact, right? But when he justifies, for example, this, this human soul thing, he just says, oh, the great poets um, say that um, according to mythology, this is true. Right? And that's not, that's a very not Socrates thing to do. Because in, in, a, in one of the other dialogues, which is the Republic, Socrates absolutely freaking disses poets for like half of the time. <laughs> so it, it's, it's a little bit weird and out of character. So I've got a couple conspiracy theories of number one, Socrates is just making fun of Mino at this point and he doesn't respect him enough as a human being to actually give him like proper guidance. Or number two, Socrates just is, again, she's kind of looking at this kid and he wants to kind of give him the tough love type education, which is like he's going to humiliate him, but he's not going to realize until later on he becomes a little bit smarter and realize he had been humiliated and that memory is going to propel him to learn about virtue, which again is a stretch, but those are the two theories that I have about it because it's just so, so, so weird, especially if you've read other dialogues of, on, on Socrates, Socrates going through these topics. And although it could be perhaps by the fact that Mino is extremely short compared to the other dialogues, but still I believe it's, it's weird and it's interesting to talk about. And that's pretty much it. Mino is a confusing dialogue of Socrates trying to teach, trying to teach Mino about how it, it and, and trying to answer the question is virtue is teachable or not, to which they come to the conclusion of no. And in the middle they get, they do some weird things and Socrates acts, acts really weird and out of character, and that's, that's kind of the Mino, I guess. And again, I have this really big conspiracy theory on Mino has something really deep inside, like foreshadowing-wise, or something about the character psychology that we as uh, readers can't really get into on the first kind of shallow level that I'm looking at the text at the moment. But who knows, right? It, it could be something really interesting. I could just be tripping. Who knows? But Mino is an interesting dialogue. You can give it a read if you want a bit of a mind twister to work on. But it isn't like a huge recommendation for me because, again, it was this strange. And all of the concepts discussed within the actual text is discussed in other dialogues as well. Like, for example, talk, talk about virtue, the talk about the immortality of the soul. It almost felt like a degraded, summarized, bad version of several different dialogues, which again, is strange. And that's about it for me. Uh, read it if you want. If you don't want, then it's whatever. And like always, your podcaster, Anna Podcaster, is with Mino, everybody. Bye, Plato. And have a great day, everyone.